Hey, this is Ayub and today we're gonna understand course. <laughs> you can agree with me that browsers have become sophisticated and as the web evolves and gets complicated, browsers try to keep up with the pace and take care of quite a few responsibilities and aspects for regular users and developers alike, right? Security is one of those aspects. Meet Sophie. She is a good innocent lady who uses her bank account to make purchases online and also has other accounts opened in her browser on different websites for personal and professional reasons. The browser provides her with a smooth experience by keeping track of her passwords and sensitive data so whenever she wants to enter a trusted website, she doesn't have to log in again and again. Whenever she visits one of those websites, data is requested through a script and the browser does not hesitate to respond because usually the website requesting the data is a trusted client of the server. For example, the front end of the banking platform talking to the server. Alright, Sophie was looking for something on the web and she visited a malicious website that tried to take advantage of the fact that Sophie stays authenticated in her trusted websites and calls her credit card data through a script as if the request was being made from the original website. Uh oh, this is bad. Sophie seems on the verge of poverty. This is called cross-site request forgery or CSERF. This is just one example of the threats users like Sophie are exposed to every day on the internet. Luckily for us, browsers are aware of such practices and have security measures for that. And just to let you know, that is not enough. Of course, the developer should do his part to secure his website. Great. One famous mechanism by which browsers prevent these types of attacks is called Same Origin Policy, or SOAP for short. Remember that a CSERF attack tries to forge a malicious request as if it is made by the unknown user in order to steal personal data or perform malicious actions. And the browser tries to prevent that by default, like this. Essentially, SOAP is the browser's way of telling websites you visit that no one can request any data or perform any operation outside his origin. And by the way, an origin simply means the source of the request, meaning that who is making the request. If the user is making the request through the front end of the website, then the request is probably from the same origin or is from a trusted client. Otherwise, it is not. For example, in this case, Sophie is trying to use a web app and is making requests to the app server from a client on the same origin. So everything goes smoothly. But when the website she is using tries to make a request to a server outside his origin, unfortunately it gets rejected. An origin is the combination of the scheme, the domain and the port. That is to say, if only one of these three elements is changed, then we are not on the same origin anymore. Can you tell me if these are two different origins? What about these two? Great, all right. Now, there is no one single implementation of SOAP and it can take different forms. The W3C sums it up real nice. It says, although the same origin policy differs between APIs, the overarching intent is to let users visit untrusted websites without those websites interfering with the user's session with honest websites. In other words, the browser cannot allow websites the user visits interfere and take advantage of other websites' active sessions. Alright, now let's go back. So, we understand how our browsers protect us from poverty and other threats and we should be thankful for that. Now, you're likely here because you're a developer and you encountered one of these messages or you might want to provide services for other websites and you want them to be able to talk to your API or your situation might be different and you just need to know what the heck is course and how to deal with it. Well, we're halfway there. So now we know that SOAP is very restrictive and in cases where we want other websites to be able to make requests to our backend and perform operations, they get rejected. Yeah, I think you all know that feeling of being rejected. It's not a good feeling, might. Alright, that was bad Australian, but I'm working on it. Next videos will be Australian. Alright, even though there are certain things you can do with SOAP, such as embed others' content into your website, the policy is mostly restrictive and we need a way to relax it. I want my front end to talk to my other API, for God's sake. Why do I keep getting this warning? The solution is course, cross-origin resource sharing. Well, I bet now you can understand the first part, the cross-origin part. It means cross-site communication exchange. And what about resource sharing? Well, everything an API provides, and essentially everything on the web is called a resource. 
In plain English, this means your resources could be requested from outside, from other origins, so that external entities that you choose, so it's a good thing, can talk to your website and perform operations. Okay, hopefully this will be governed by specific conditions and requirements. Sweet. Now, the way to implement course is to configure your API to tell browsers that it's okay for it to be called from external entities different from its origin. This is achieved through HTTP headers in the response. The browser gets a response from the server and compares the access control law origin with the requesting website's origin and permits access to the response if they match. Mainly with access control law origin header, you can specify which origins exactly are allowed to talk to your API or you can use an asterisk to denote that anyone can talk to you. Great. All right. Dave is developing an API for his web application and wants to allow other websites to talk to his API. After a little bit of research, he finds out that the use of access control allow origin is not enough for some requests. So after a little bit of more research, he finds out that access control allow credentials needs to be set to true if the request includes credentials, such as cookies, authorization headers, etc. Apparently, Dave wants to allow that, and that is possible as well. Great. So it seems Chorus gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of relaxing the same origin policy. Other Chorus headers could be used to add more restrictions or relax the policy even more. And please note that restrictions are a good security mechanism. Don't overlook that. Nice. Okay, we know now that by default a browser blocks cross-origin requests to be made, unless it already knows that is allowed. For certain types of requests such as delete and put, the course headers we've seen before are not enough. The browser needs to know if those types of requests are permitted by the API. And to get this information, the cross-origin request is preceded by a request using the options method. This is called a preflight. The preflight gives the server a chance to examine what the actual request will look like before it's made. If the server doesn't approve that, it tells the browser to return an error to the client without sending the request. And it's worth noting that we need course because we use browsers that apply the same origin policy. And we need to bypass that through controlled relaxation. If we're talking to the API through the command line, however, things will be different. There is no SOAP in CLI web clients, and that means we don't need course. Keep that in mind. So my goal here is simply to help you wrap your head around the concept and help you see it in the big picture. Going into details is beyond the scope of this video. You can visit the Mozilla developer documentation to know more. I put that in the description along with all the resources. And your next step is to explore the different security threats on the web and find out how your browser deals with them. And this should be enough to help you implement course in your application easily. I hope I've solved your problem or at least you have learned something new and interesting. I would really appreciate it if you leave a comment and give me feedback about the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the bell icon and till the next video, stay tuned.